A very good morning to all my dear students. Welcome all of you. I know how eagerly you have been waiting for today's class. And trust me, we have mutual feelings over here also. I have been waiting to teach you all further. Very good morning. Ahmed, Manish, Pavan, Nishi, Ranjit, Anjali, Abhishek, all of you, Hitesh, Juhi, Madhu, Vikash, Anuj, all of you, a very good morning students, Ravina, Surya. And quickly tell me, have you revised your implied conditions and warranties? Today, we will be completing our second chapter and also we are going to start the third chapter that is transfer of ownership and delivery of goods. So we have been forming a contract. I have been offering to sell you the goods. You have been becoming my buyer. Today, we are going to wind up the contract. We're going to perform that kind of contract where the sale is going to take place. Shashikan, Muskan, Ram, good morning, all of you children. Miss Ravina is saying the two points define description. Can you please explain? Ravina, you can write down your specific query, what you want to ask, Pita. I will explain you, okay? All right. Very good. Abhishek Shay says that, yes, ma'am, we have revised. Great. Pranjal, Anand, Sahu, Kaira, Muskan, Kamal, Monu, Tejban, Pankaj, Sanya, Brijesh, Sudharni, Nancy, Prince, Madhu, Kambal. Good morning, all of your children. Thank you, Sanya. I am also good. Ranjit, Lisa, Bharat Kumar, all of you have revised it. So wonderful. So that is what is very, very important because children, each day adds up to the big result. So every day we keep practicing, we keep revising, we keep making notes, we keep writing the answers. Definitely we are going to crack a CA foundation. So that is the crux where it lies. मैम हमने पढ़ना है पढ़ना कैसे है हम कैसे पास होंगे जब आप रिवीजन करोगे रिवीजन के बिना यू टेल मी दैट मैम आई अटेंडेड योर क्लास एंड इट वाज वेरी नाइस आई एंजॉयड इट एंड आई अंडरस्टूड बट आई डिड नॉट ओपन माय बुक्स आफ्टर दैट आई डिड नॉट रिवाइज यू आर नॉट गोइंग टू पास आई एम टेलिंग यू यस आई हैव सेड दैट बट अगेन लेट मी कंप्लीट इट यू हैव अटेंडेड माय क्लास यू हैव मेड योर नोट्स यू ओपन योर बुक्स आफ्टर स्टडीइंग इन द इवनिंग यू सैट डाउन यू डिड योर रिवीजन Definitely you're going to pass the exams. Revision is very important. I generally tell students for foundation three times revision should be given. But once if you have done with me after that twice even you revise it like one you second revision you give it when you read it what we have done in the class and third full and final revision after the classes when you give that is sufficiently fine. Okay. Mr. Pankaj, word description is not defined. Okay, we will just discuss that. Let's start with the revision time. So, uh, word description, all those who are asking. Uh, good, Nishi. That's good. You should read it from the study material also. Kambeshwari is saying trade conditions. When we do implied warranties as to trade, Mr. Ms. Kambeshwari, you will understand that point also. Okay, let me just complete about description, those who are asking. Implied condition as to description, children, it specifically tells you that this term has not been defined, but then we have to decide its meaning from the judicial interpretation. I have very interesting two examination questions from for you all of you to discuss with me today. Again, that implied condition as to description will be specifically taught you over there. So pay attention when we do that question. As of now, the meaning of word description is not defined means. Now, this pen is a golden color pen. I have told the shopkeeper that I need a pen here. It should be a golden cap, a golden pen, which is blue and cap yellow. So, I am describing, I am giving this definition. Or the seller comes to me and he tells me, ma'am, this is a golden pen which has nice silver cap and it writes blue. So I bought it. He said it's a golden pen, cap is silver and I will write blue. So I ordered 10 such pens. When I opened the box, they were silver pens with a golden cap. Ulta ho gaya. So I will say you have breached the implied condition as to description. Aapne mujhe define kuch aur kara aur diya kuch aur hai. So description is a very uh, particular term. It depends upon case to case. He might tell you that, okay, fine, I'm going to sell you this I, I, uh, blue bottle which has a white cap. Can you see? This is a blue bottle which has a white cap. But when I opened the box, it was a blue bottle with silver cap. 
I can reject the goods. You described me something else. You gave me something else. I can reject the goods. All right. All my friends who were asking about description, I hope it's clear. Sanya and uh, Abhishek Cha, they're asking about mercantility. <clears throat> mercantility, uh, Mr. Anch, again, description is the same that I just explained you, Mr. Anch Rivastav. I hope it's now clear. Regarding mercantility, children, it has to be made sure that the goods and clothes are fit for use. If I'm selling you biscuits, which are expired, I'm selling you milk, which is expired milk. I'm selling you a packet of paneer, which is sour, khatta hai, wo kharab ho chuka hai. Then it is not wholesome. Wholesomeness is the word which is used for the food items. Okay, wholesomeness is the word which is used for the food items. Mercantility is used for the goods which you are selling in the market. For example, I'm selling you the carpet and it's all toned. It's not mercantable. I'm selling you a sari which has uh, uh, holes in it. I'm selling you a bed sheet which is all toned, which is all scr scratched. So it is not mercantable. It is not in proper working condition. I sell you a washing machine which does not work. So it's not mercantable. Wholesomeness, same things in place of food. And same applies to quality and fitness. Let's have a quick revision of implied condition as to quality and fitness. I am asking you a question. Pay attention and answer me which implied condition out of these three will be applicable to it. I went to a tailor. And I told him that please dress, uh, stitch a dress for me. And I gave him the size L size dress. That is large size for me. And I want a dress which should be stitched a long dress. And it should have large size. Okay. So the tailor said, okay, please come after 10 days. I will make your goods ready. And when the dress came... I saw that it was small size dress. I gave him the size and I told him it should be a large size dress, but it, it was a small size dress. Has there any breach of implied condition out of these seven? Has occurred yes ma'am or no ma'am? And if yes or no, what kind of implied condition has been breached and what are the rights available to the buyer? What can you do as a buyer? Neha, Yadav, Abhishek, we're going to revise all implied conditions. Why are you getting worried? Abhishek, I hope wholesomeness is clear to you. So wait and watch. We will clear other doubts also. So tell me, answer me students, which implied condition has been breached? Okay, Mr. Anj, now your question has come very clearly. I will explain you. Give me one minute. Lisa says, excellent. Prince also says the correct answer, ma'am. It is breach of implied condition as to quality and fitness. Why? Because three points, conditions have to be seen. Number one, did I give the goods to the seller who deals such goods? Yes, ma'am. Tailor is the one. Did I rely on the seller's skill and judgment? Yes, ma'am. Did I made him known the purpose? Yes, I told him that this is the size and according to this, it should be stretched. Now, since three conditions were met, therefore, there was an implied condition that he should give me the goods which should be as per quality and fitness. But they were not as per that quality and fitness. Therefore, I can reject the goods. Excellent. Ranjit, Kamal, Muskan, Bikash, Anjali, Ravina, Kinjal, M. Suchida, Akash, Akash Das, Nishi, Tambeshwari, Sanya, Ansh, Prince, Lisa, Nishi, Garg. Excellent. All those who have given the correct answers. Kamal, Madhu, Abhishek, Chao. I got so many names. Very good. That is absolutely correct. So that means you have revised it very nicely. Now, <clears throat> one another question somebody has raised. Ma'am, the class or kind of goods described by certain characteristics, please explain. So again, this goes to, I hope these three conditions are now clear. Nobody has any doubts in these three. Now, once again, somebody is asking a doubt about description. So, child, about the kind and category of goods. Remember, last time in the class, I told you I'm selling you borosil glass. 
तो बोरोसेल ग्लास इज अ कैटेगरी ऑफ ग्लास अ टाइप ऑफ ग्लास विच इज वेरी थिन विच इज जनरली यूज फॉर सर्विंग टू द गेस्ट इफ समन इज कम टू हाउस एंड अदर इज जैसे फॉर एग्जाम्पल अ स्टील ग्लास इन विच यू ड्रिंक वॉटर इन अ रेगुलर रूटीन so i told you i'll be giving you borosil glasses a particular category of glass but i actually gave you steel glasses breach of description hai ya nahi ravina anch and all those who were asking me please answer me is there any breach of implied condition as to description yes ma'am or no ma'am very good aditya kumar divya pankaj juhi friends correct answers priyanka vivekesh pranjal Yes, ma'am. It is a breach of implied condition as to description. Excellent. Those who have answered this one also correct. Why? Because I have asked for a particular class of goods. Class and kind means a category of goods. अगर आपने वैसे ही goods बोले हैं supply करने के लिए Java sugar. तो वो sugar जो है वो Java quality की होनी चाहिए. Egyptian cotton. जो cotton है वो Egyptian quality की होनी चाहिए. Raw silk. So whatever you are describing, it should be as per that description. ओके एक्सेलेंट कमल रस्तोगी सिंह मैम वीडियो नहीं आ रही आई होप अदर्स कैन सी मी माय वीडियो इज विजिबल चिल्ड्रन मे बी सम इंटरनेट कनेक्शन प्रॉब्लम एट योर एंड कमल एंड सुधाकर मर्केंटेबिलिटी अब है मैम मर्केंटेबिलिटी दोबारा बता दो बेटा मर्केंटेबिलिटी मींस मैंने आपको ये मोबाइल फोन बेचा बट ये मोबाइल चलता नहीं तो क्या गुड्स मर्केंटेबल है नो मैम इट्स नॉट वर्किंग इट्स नॉट इन प्रॉपर कंडीशन सो इट इज नॉट मर्केंटेबल Thank you, Ranjit is saying, ma'am, it's visible. Priyanka is also saying, ma'am, it's clearly visible. Thank you so much. Okay, friends, Kumar, I hope accountability is now clear to you. And what was the implied condition as to title, children? Let's have a quick revision about title. What is the meaning of title, and what is the implied condition as to title? ओके अंजलि थैंक यू तेजबन थैंक यू सो मच फॉर कंफर्मिंग सुधाकर इज आल्सो सेइंग वीडियो इज विजिबल सो स्टूडेंट्स लॉग इन ऑन टाइम दोज आर राइटिंग देयर लेट मुस्कान अनुज गुड करेक्ट आंसर सो व्हाट इज द इंप्लाइड कंडीशन एज टू टाइटल टाइटल मींस मैम ओनरशिप वेरी गुड सानिया मर्केंटेबिलिटी मींस प्रॉपर वर्किंग कंडीशन दैट इज गुड and title means ownership vivekesh who will tell me what will happen if breach has happened miss ravina i hope you are clear about description ravina now so quickly tell me what will happen if breach of title has been done yes kamal anuj ranjit pavan where are others very good ma'am the goods will be returned to the true owner and buyer can recover the money from the seller so that is the case of breach of implied condition as to title excellent all those who have answered in the same way well done next we have discussed about description now tell me if you have eaten the sample cake don't you think that the bulk large quantity of cake should also match with the sample Yes, ma'am. If the sample has been shown to us, the goods that have been purchased corresponding to the sample should also match. And what is the case of sample and description both? So let's listen to a very interesting example. A sold B. Another test for you all of you. A sold B, basmati rice. What is he selling? He is selling basmati rice. and he told him that uh, b also said gave the description that i want to buy basmati rice only the goods as to description implied condition kya hoti hai ki a will supply basmati rice only and if basmati rice is not supplied b can return the goods clear hai but a also showed him a sample which was having basmati rice plus सम ग्रेन ऑफ ऑर्डनरी राइस नॉर्मल चावल भी थे एंड बासमती चावल भी मिक्स हुए हुए वॉट कैटेगरी ऑफ गुड्स आर बींग सोल्ड ओवर हेयर द गुड्स आर बींग सोल्ड बाय 
sample as well as description. Am I right? Number one thing is here the sale is by sample and description. He showed you the sample basmati and ordinary rice and B has specifically asked for basmati rice. So number one thing ma'am here the goods are being sold as per sample and description. When B found the goods, were they asked for description? Yes, ma'am. They were asked for the description. He has asked for basmati rice and he has given the basmati rice. But was the sample matching? No, ma'am, it is not matching. Was he allowed to compare the sample? Definitely, he should be allowed to compare the sample. And when he compared the sample, he found that basmati rice is having all that long grains. But the sample is having some ordinary rice also mixed. Can the buyer B reject the goods? Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. And why, ma'am? Jaldi se batao mujhe. Can the buyer reject the goods? Yes or no? The Meshwari is writing in Hindi real owner ko saman vapis de dena bita. Start writing in English so that when you write in the exam, practice achche se vaisi ho jai thi ki na. Return the goods to the true owner and buyer can recover the refund of money from the seller. And everyone has given wonderful answer for that one. Those who are watching the class on mobile phone, I think they are having some problem and others have written on laptop the video and voice is clear. Please check your internet connections, children. And please someone from admin also confirm. Sir, my voice and video is clear now. All right, all right. So children, it's absolutely clear. Please check your connections. The bus Bulk of the goods shall match with the sample, Mr. Bikash. Correct. Dheeraj is saying, ma'am, he can reject the goods. Very good. But you have not given me the reason. Mr. Bikash is also giving the reasons of sample. What about description, children? Priyanka says, yes, ma'am, buyer can reject the goods. No, ma'am, the goods are patent defect. Ravina, there is no defect in these goods. It is clear-cut case of sample and description. Shikha says, yes, Ranjit, Pankaj, Monu, all of them are saying, yes, ma'am, can reject the goods, which is correct. Divya, Goel, Hitesh, Sanya, Anil, Nishi, Akash, Aditya, Sneha, Moe, Rani, Devin, Sudhakar, Joy, Banik, Madhu, all of you are correct. Anuj Kumar, repudiate means to cancel the contract. Mr. Ramal, yes. All of you are correct, children. But you have to tell me why. Miss Renuka Gaurav, excellent. I am going to come on this question, but that is again a separate question. Here I have told you on comparison only you find. So all those who have written, yes, ma'am, buyer can reject the goods. That is correct answer because the goods were not as per the sample, but they were as per the description. Therefore, he can reject the goods. Now, those, my dear friends who are an answering me different question. If I tell you that buyer has accepted these goods, the goods were not as per description, but he has accepted these goods and he has also cooked the rice. Now, can he reject the goods? Now, come your section 13 into picture. You will say that, ma'am, the goods are not divisible. You cannot divide the goods. You cannot separate the goods. And the goods have been accepted. So, the third category becomes uh, possible. In this case, compulsory waiver here. You cannot treat the condition breach. You can only recover the damages. If you have accepted the rise, you have cooked it. Here you can only recover the damages. You cannot return the goods. Is that clear, everyone? Remember the cases of breach of condition can be treated as breach of warranty. Very good. Excellent. All of you have given the correct answer. So that means we have completely revised our first part of chapter 2. I hope you have 
noted all these questions that I have drawn over here. So let's move ahead now. There's another descriptive question which I'm going to give you. Last test question. Now I'm going to take your test. Pada pad se padte hai and I want your answers over here. Good. Those who have written, we are enjoying the revision. That's great. I'm also enjoying doing it with you because you're giving wonderful answers. So give yourself a pattern. Certain goods were sold by sample by A to B. Yahan to ma'am, aapne batai diya, sale by sample hai. So very good. Dekhte hai kya hoga isme. Who in turn sold the goods to C by sample and C sold the goods to B by sample. So A showed a certain category of cloth. B touched it, felt it nice and purchased it. B showed the sample to C. C also purchased it. C showed the sample to D. D found the goods are not as per the sample. He found the deviation. Deviation means alag hai. Hindi mein jo deviation ka meaning jana jate alag hai. They are not matching. Deviation means they are not matching. They are different. They are not matching. D ne ye cheez find out kare ki jo sample hai na wo different hai. They are not matching. So he rejected the goods and gave notice to C. C ko bada gussa aya yaar. D ne to bola ki good sample ke nahi hai and goods reject kar diye and C ko paise dene bade wapis. So angry C went and filed a case against B and B also filed a case against A. Please tell me B and C can succeed. Yes, ma'am or no, ma'am. Can advise B and C under the contract. Can they file a case? Yes, ma'am. Or no, ma'am. Can they reject the goods? What will happen in this case? Quickly give me the answers. If rice is of different type of rate, then how can I get the damages? Vivekesh, if the rice was, say for example, 500 per kg was basmati and ordinary rice work was for, for seven, 475. So 25 rupees balance difference you can recover as the damages. Give me the answers for this descriptive question, children. Can B and C reject the goods? Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. What will happen? Yes, ma'am. They can file a case. Wow. Absolutely wrong answer. Very good, Juhi Kumari. They have already accepted the goods. Therefore, they cannot file the case. Tanvi, correct answer. I am reading the names of those who have given me the correct answer. Joy Banik, no ma'am. Ranjit, no ma'am. So that's correct answer. So no was the correct answer. They cannot reject the goods. Why? Again, section 13, subsection 2. Abhi to padhaya mene aapko. Abhi revise kara humne. Section 13, breach of condition has to be treated as breach of warranty where you have accepted the goods. You have accepted, my dear. You have sold the goods further to C. C, my dear, you did not see the deviation. Now your patent defect things come. I have given you, first of all, whenever you are selling the goods by sample, Anj, Motiani, Divya, Neha, Madhu, sab ne bilkul thik answer diye. Absolutely correct. Pata pata se samjha deti hum. Jab goods as per sample so lote hai, number one, the goods should correspond to the sample. Number two, you should be given the chance to compare the bulk with the sample. So B and C, your eyes were closed. You did not compare the sample and you accepted the goods and you sold it further. So it is your mistake. But don't worry, section 13 is applicable. Treat it as warranty and claim the damages. Nobody is stopping him from claiming the damages, but now you cannot return the goods. Breach of condition, you have shown your acceptance. Section 13 has become applicable. However, this Mr. D, definitely he can reject the goods because he's the first person who has found the deviation. So he, will, he can reject the goods because breach of implied condition as to sample has happened. Whenever the goods are sold by sample, they must correspond to the sample. Ma'am, is ka answer kaise likhna hai? Descriptive question number five from your study material. I intentionally did not want to do it from there because then you cheat and give me the answers. So now no cheating has happened. Fair answers you have given to me. So go and see your study material descriptive question number five. I have taken this question from there. Write your answers in three different paragraphs. Read the answer carefully. Read it twice and thrice today after the class. And this is your homework. You will write and frame its answers. Provision, sale by sample. Facts of the case, explain the facts. And conclusion on the basis of above analysis and conclusion. 
दिस इज वॉट वी फ्रेम दस उसमें से पढ़ो आंसर समझो एंड तीन पैराग्राफ्स में बना लो ठीक है ओके आई होप यू हैव लर्न ऑल्सो नाउ लॉन्ग विद रिविजन सो दैट्स ग्रेट now let's move to the implied warranties we have four type of implied warranties also number one warranty as to undisturbed position i think we started off with the first warranty in the previous lecture what is the meaning of undisturbed position position means custody of the goods position means i have the custody or use of the goods so when i told you about the condition of title I told you that tractor that I was driving in my field. Somebody came, the two owner came and took that tractor away from me. Can I still enjoy the use of that tractor? My usage has been disturbed. This is my water bottle. I purchased it from the seller, thinking that he is the true owner. But then it was breach of condition as to title. Now this true owner came and he took this water bottle back from me. so my position has been disturbed i cannot enjoy the usage of such kind of goods therefore with such kind of implied condition has been breached there is a breach of implied warranty also and you can go and claim the damages in this case what are damages damages are as defined in section 72 73 75 of indian contract act headley versus baxendale case general damages special damages whatever the damages nobody in the exam is going to ask you how to calculate the damages we are simply going to ask you whether it is a breach of condition or it was a breach of warranty whether you can return the goods or you can only claim the damages in such a case where possession has been disturbed you have purchased a laptop you have spent the money on its repair true owner comes takes the laptop back you can recover the repair money also so that is the damages the amount of the laptop you will recover from the seller that is the breach of implied condition where you are recovering the damages that is the breach of implied warranty clear ho gaya let us take this example from the study material as well this is that answer that i was talking about question 5 you can frame your answer from here okay yes now coming to the implied warranties over here so that we don't miss out a single thing from the study as well undisturbed position this is again the laptop example that we have just discussed so read it from here as well implied warranty let me just complete all the implied warranties children then we will move to the queries now leave the query session and come back here in the class okay good warranty as to non existence of incumbrances incumbrances means charges so there should not be any charges when you are Uh, selling the goods they should be non existence means they should be free from the charges when you say non existence of incumbrances means the goods shall be free from any kind of charges you should not have given the goods as a security to somebody else let's take this example a pledged his car with c a was a person he has pledged his car with c means he has given his car as a security kya kara usne usne loan liya paisa manga usse 150000 paisa manga usne and as a security apni gaadi de di paisa borrow kar raha hai na usne pledging transaction ho rahi hai remember pledge can be done for movable goods what kind of property in the goods has a passed to c when he has pledged the goods with c what kind of property he has passed when a pledged his car with c what kind of property in the goods has been passed from a to c answer me quickly i am asking you children before i proceed further i want to know what kind of property has been passed from a to c when he has pledged the goods
and he promises to give its position the next day a then sells the car to b abhi baat karte hain uske bare mein bhi special property is the correct answer very good very good divya rani anand nancy ranjit hin hini kumari इमूवेबल गुड्स क्यों लिख रहे हो बेटा ये तो मूवेबल गुड्स है ना गाड़ी इमूवेबल थोड़ी ना चलती है मूवेबल है सिंबॉलिक डिलीवरी शुभम शर्मा व्हाई यू राइटिंग सिंबॉलिक डिलीवरी आई एम आस्किंग व्हाट काइंड ऑफ प्रॉपर्टी हैज बीन पास्ड अब्दुल सेज ही हैज ट्रांसफर्ड द पोजीशन सो द पोजीशन हैज बीन गिवन बट नॉट द ओनरशिप स्पेशल प्रॉपर्टी धीरज कायरा करेक्ट आंसर वेरी गुड Nishi, Vivekesh, all those who have given uh, uh, special property, that is the correct answer. I don't know why you are writing symbolic delivery, Mr. Suresh. We are not talking about talking about the delivery of goods. We are talking which kind of property has been transferred. So, special property was the correct answer. Now, let's understand. So, that means ownership is still with Mr. A. Yes, ma'am, it is still with Mr. A. So, A ne kya kara? Gari bechdi B ko. B ko na yaha par B is the buyer. so now let's imagine this thing neha yadav you are selling your car to priyanka roniga so there is girl miss priyanka and there is a girl miss neha yadav who is attending the class with us so neha yadav sells her car to priyanka but already neha has pledged that car with divya so where is the car lying car is with divya can neha sell that car to priyanka don't you think it has certain charges against this car there has been a loan amount which she has taken of 150000 she should first clear the loan get the car free as a security then only she can sell it to another person otherwise if you sell such a goods which you have given as a security it is a breach of implied warranty as to non existence of incumbrances therefore you third party buyer can reject the goods and claim the damages now what will happen over here b is the buyer who is purchasing in a good faith matlab vishwas kar raha hai wo aapke upar trust kar raha hai good faith ka matlab hota hai vishwas karna trust karna wo yahi soch raha hai ki gaadi pe koi charge nahi hai without knowing the fact that all the car, already the car has been pledged now b will either ask a to clear the loan or he will himself pay the money and file a case against a for recovery of the money so what will b do b has two options in such a case number 1 b will tell a that look you have cheated me you have already taken a loan against this car so pay your loan 150000 pay it off and clear my car and i will take the car home i don't have any problem or he will go and pay 150000 the loan amount he will pay the loan amount and take the car home and later on he will recover the money from mr a he will pay the loan and recover it later from mr a so this is the solution available with mr b the buyer if there has been any breach of implied warranty as to non existence of incumbrances all right so you can all write down in short notes whenever there is breach of implied warranty as to non existence of incumbrances incumbrances means the charges then buyer should either ask the seller to clear the charges to clear such charges means wo jo loan liya hua hai uske girvi rakhwa kar wo clear kare to clear such charges or he will himself repay the loan or charges against the goods and recover the same from the seller all right isko likh lo beta
किंजल आई जस्ट टोल्ड यू इनक्यूबरेंसेस मींस द चार्जेस जब आपने कोई गुड्स एज ए सिक्योरिटी दी होते हैं उसके उसे गिरवी रखवाकर कोई लोन लिया होता है आपने तो वो इनक्यूबरेंसेस वर्ड आ जाता है आई होप इट इज क्लियर नाउ स्टूडेंट्स लेट्स मूव अहेड नाउ लेट्स मूव टू द नेक्स्ट पॉइंट दैट इज सो द टू पॉइंट्स आर क्लियर इंप्लाइड वारंटी इंप्लाइड वारंटी एज टू क्वालिटी और फिटनेस बाय यूजेज ऑफ ट्रेड अब यूजेज ऑफ ट्रेड क्या होता है ट्रेड मतलब आप जो बिजनेस करते हो रेगुलर रूटीन में जो आप काम करते हो आपकी ड्यूटी है कि आप बिस्किट्स के पैकेट सेल करते हो तो उसके ऊपर एक्सपायरी डेट लिखी होनी चाहिए आप मेडिसिन सेल करते हो तो प्रिस्क्राइब बाय डॉक्टर डेंजरस नेचर ऑफ गुड्स ये चीजें लिखी होनी चाहिए यूजेज ट्रेड के यूजेज पे पता लगती है इम्प्लाइड वारंटी फॉर अ पर्टिकुलर पर्पज मे बी अक्स्ट और अटैच इट से रिगार्डिंग इम्प्लाइड कंडीशन एज टू क्वालिटी एंड फिटनेस द रूल इज बायर बी अवेयर But the seller is under new duty to reveal the unflattering truth. Means, seller will not tell you that the goods are not fit for the use. But there is a certain usage of trade. Say, for example, listen very carefully. For example, A generally sell the goods to B. Inka ek dealing hai. Trade dealing matlab inka ek business hai. A hamesha B ko goods sell karta hai. एंड एक डेक्लेन लेता है एक मेडिसिन सेल करता है जो कि इम्पोर्ट इम्पोर्ट होकर आती है बाहर से ठीक है दीज काइंड ऑफ ड्रग्स और मेडिसिन विच आर इम्पोर्टेड ही जनरली गिव अ डेक्लेन दैट दे आर फ्री फ्रॉम एनी डिफेक्ट्स दे आर फ्री फ्रॉम एनी सी डिफेक्ट्स मतलब अगर जब समुन्दर से आ रहे थे तो इसमें पानी नहीं भरा है इसमें कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं आ रही है ऐसी डेक्लेन इस ट्रेड में दी जाती है ये यूजेज है ये कस्टम है ये एक रिवाज है इस ट्रेड में ऐसा डेक्लेन देने का एग्जाम्पल ले रहे अब जब ए ने ये बी को मेडिसिन सेल करा देर इज एन एम्प्लाइड वारंटी दैट ही हैज गिवन दिस डेक्लेन दैट द गुड्स आर फ्री फ्रॉम सी डिफेक्ट नाउ इट्स गुड्स हैव सच सी डिफेक्ट दैट मीन्स जनरल यूजेज ऑफ ट्रेड हैज बीन ब्रीच देयर फॉर द बायर कैन रिकवर द डैमेज फ्रॉम द सेल or let's take a day to day routine example you purchase packet of maggi and you purchase packet of chips and expiry date was not written it is a breach of implied warranty as to quality and fitness by usage of trade because it is responsibility of the business dealings that such things have to be written on the packets that you are selling okay depends upon the usage of trade jis tarah ka business kar rahe hain aapko uske according batana padega and another one dangerous nature of goods very very important and interesting there was a person who purchased this uh, bottle of uh, powder poisonous powder from the chemist shop for certain purposes so such kind of dangerous goods has to be written that it is a dangerous nature of good the kid should be away from it you have you read aaj ek check karna medicines pe generally likha hota hai keep it away from children क्यों लिखा होता है बिकॉज द वेरी डेंजरस स्मॉल चाइल्ड हु इज क्रॉलिंग विल पुट इट इन हिज माउथ ही डजंट नो व्हाट इज इट सो दैट्स व्हाई इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट यू एज अ ह्यूमन बीइंग यू शुड रीड इट डेंजरस नेचर ऑफ गुड्स एंड कीप इट स्ट्रिक्टली अवे फ्रॉम चिल्ड्रन कीप इट अवे फ्रॉम डायरेक्ट सनलाइट ऐसा भी लिखा होता है डेंजरस नेचर है ना जो गुड्स की वो बतानी जरूरी होती है ये एक वार्निंग है वार्निंग्स देनी जरूरी होती है सो सेलर मस्ट वार्न द बायर ऑफ सच काइंड ऑफ डेंजर्स So there was a disinfectant powder. The buyer just opened it, and all the powder went into his eyes. Seller should have told him that be very careful when you open it because when you moment you open the lid, it can go into your eyes, and your eyes can be gone. So if such a kind of things you're not disclosing, you're not mentioning breach of implied warranty, definitely, and it can be a criminal case also if you try to take life of someone like this. So it is very very important. I will show you the example from my study material. so when you see the pictures you tend to remember it nicely so this is your typewriter or second hand typewriter which was stolen undisturbed position this is the car against which loan has been taken and uh, usage of trade when you are dealing with the share market accordingly the broker is expected to be free from bad deliveries that means if you are selling the shares they should not have any uh, breach of implied warranties and dangerous nature uh, the lid of disinfectant powder should be opened with care so if it is a disinfectant powder or it is such a thing which you generally use for your washroom cleanings or any other kind of purposes like your lysol bottles they should have those kind of dangerous nature words <coughs> warnings should be clearly written so that the person who is a layman who doesn't know anything should not use it for any other purpose 
ऑल राइट क्लियर हो गया सो so, 2019 में फोर मार्क्स का डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चन आया था एग्जामिनेशन में डिस्कस द प्रीवियस टाइप्स ऑफ वेरियस टाइप्स ऑफ एम्प्लॉयड वारंटी सो यू वर आस्किंग मी मैम डायरेक्ट क्वेश्चंस आते हैं बिल्कुल आते हैं बेटा अगर ऐसा क्वेश्चन फोर मार्क्स का आया तो चारों एम्प्लॉयड वारंटी की डेफिनेशन दीजिए एंड ये वारंटीज डिफाइन कर दो कर लेते हो जल्दी जल्दी बताओ मुझे थोड़ा जगाएं आपको यस मिस्टर अंच इन जनरली फॉर टोबैको स्मोक सच काइंड ऑफ डेंजरस नेचर ऑफ गुड्स इज मेंशन दैट इज गुड थिनर रिमूवर इज आल्सो पॉइजन यस अनल एंड सच काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स आर मेंशन शुड 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 बी मेंशन बिकाश इज सेइंग मैम कैन यू एक्सप्लेन द फर्स्ट इंप्लाइड वारंटी अगेन सो मिस्टर बिकाश आपको क्या नहीं समझ आया मुझसे वो पूछो ठीक है has it a specific very good ans shrivastava that is correct so what all you buy ma'am please section 17 explain in hindi divya what you want me to explain not full section can be repeated because then we will not be able to wind up the syllabus beta aapko jo nahi samajh aaya aap question puch lijiye doctrine means the principle muskan Yes, Mr. Anish Kumar. This kind of questions generally come in the exam, and they can come again as well. Okay, so many of you have written interesting things. Yes, ma'am, we love to purchase in the supermarket, and we enjoy buying such kind of goods. But what is the caution which is written? You have seen in malls. Maybe some times we are walking, so it is written, "Beware slippery surface." When do we write? When we are mopping, when there is wet floor, we tell them to please be aware. Otherwise, you will slip. अब आप बोलोगे मैम ये इसका मतलब यहाँ पे पढ़ाई से क्या लेना देना है इसका क्या मीनिंग है सो आई एम ट्राइंग टू टेल यू लेट द बायर बी अवेयर बी कॉशियस बिफोर यू बाय द गुड्स नाउ कैविट एमटर कैविट एमटर इज गोइंग टू टेल यू दैट द बायर हैज टू बी वेरी वेरी केयरफुल बिफोर यू हैंग अराउंड विद योर दिस बास्केट ऑफ बाइंग द गुड्स you should be definitely aware about whatever you are buying check their expiry date check the item is edible or not whether it is correct or not if you are buying certain vegetables fruits they should not be rotten you should also see before buying the goods it is not always the seller's duty it is the buyer's duty also to be careful to be careful while buying the goods this is what the rule of caveat emptor tells you so let the buyer be aware let us read this rule of caveat emptor this is the last topic of unit 2 it says doctrine of caveat emptor means a principle koi rule batana ya kisi ke liye principle banane ko bolte hain doctrine okay let the buyer be aware there are three conditions these are the three conditions wherein you can make the seller responsible वो कहते हैं अगर तो बायर ने पर्पस बता दिया हमने जैसे अभी गुड स्टिच कराए थे उसे पर्पस बता दिया था टेलर के पास गए थे हम रिलाई करे उसकी स्किल एंड जजमेंट पे सेलर का बिजनेस है टू सप्लाई करना फिर तो अगर गुड्स वैसे नहीं है तो उसे क्या मान लिया जाएगा ब्रीच ऑफ एम्प्लॉयड कंडीशन एज टू क्वालिटी एंड फिटनेस इफ वी हैव टोल्ड द बायर द पर्पज फॉर सेलर द पर्पज फॉर विच द गुड्स आर रिक्वायर्ड एंड ही इज द वन हू डील इन सच गुड्स then if he does not sub supply the goods accordingly then it will be a breach of implied condition as to quality and fitness apart from this any purchase that you are making it is the duty of the buyer to be aware of his purchases duty of the buyer are we all on the same page have you understood the meaning of this line so it is the duty of the buyer to satisfy himself before he buys the goods check karo agar aap khareed rahe ho aap ek powder ki bottle khareed rahe ho suppose absorb powder suna aapne ek uh, fungal infection ke liye aata hai absorb powder ek hota hai uh, normal dove ya fir uh, ponds ka powder difference hai na dono mein ponds ka powder aap general freshness ke liye use karte ho absorb powder kabhi market mein dekhna wo fungal infection ke liye 
So you have to tell the seller for what purpose you need a powder. Let's take a simpler example. You have planned to go to Goa. You want to enjoy your vacations after you have given your foundation exams. And you know that the sun will be at its peak and you wanted to buy a sunscreen. So what will you tell the seller? Ki please give me a sunscreen of a particular brand. If you just went to the shop and you told him, I need a cream, or I need a Garnier cream. He will give you a Garnier normal moisturizer, yes or no? Yes, ma'am. He will definitely give me. So it is your duty to tell him that you want the sunscreen or he should ask. Jaldi batao, mujhe fata fata se. Yes, ma'am, it is our duty. We have to tell him that uh, whether this particular uh, cream is suitable, we need a sunscreen, we have to tell him we need a Garnier sunscreen, then it is his duty to apply, supply the same. If we just tell him that we, um, we need a cream, he will apply us any kind of cream. So it is very important for the buyer to check before buying the goods. And if he has normal cream, then you have to check it. Your responsibility is to see that this is the sunscreen that I wanted. If the goods turn out to be defective and do not serve his purpose, buyer cannot hold the seller responsible. Say, for example, the lid was opened, you did not check the packing, you did not see the expiry date, you are relying on your own skill. You have thought that you will suit the Garnier brand and you have told me that if you have an allergy on skin, then it's your problem. It's a little problem. Here, when you are relying on your own skill and judgment needs, you have your own chosen the brand and everything. Then you cannot hold the seller responsible. Yes, very nice. Now you have started answering. Thank God your answers are coming. Otherwise, you disappear. I do not. I feel where are you? No, Jairam, we don't have anything like that. You can only ask your query specifically over here. Ranjit says, Yes, ma'am, we should ask. We should tell him. The buyer should ask. Very good. Very good. Tejban, Vivekesh, Anjali, Sanya, Tanvi, Rani, Neha, Yadav, Liza, Sneha, Mohe, all of you are correct. Clear okay, yaha tak. Abhi kaat hai, seller is not bound to disclose the defects. Say for example, I am the seller and I am selling you this water bottle and uh, it is crashed, it has scratches over here. I am a seller and you are the buyer and I am selling you this water bottle and it has few scratches over here. Will the seller tell you that, ma'am, it has some scratches also? Please buy it carefully. Seller thodi na batayega. Wo to chayega, yaar, ye big jai pada pad se. Mujhi kyo batane hai, balki wo to apna hand vaha rakhega, jahan scratches hai, taaki aapko batana chale. Aisi karega na, generally ek dukandar. Kabhi dukandar batayega, haa, ye kapda mera dukan ka thik nahi hai, isko matlo. Wo to humesha defects ko hide karne ki koshish karega. He will not disclose it. Yahan pe wo hiding ki baat nahi kar raha hai. यहाँ पे वो पेटेंट डिफेक्ट कह रहा है जो आपको दिखाई दे बट ही विल नॉट डिस्कलोज इट ही स्पीक ऑन हिज ओन वाई बिकॉज इज ए बिजनेस मैन यू वॉन्ट टू सेल प्रोडक्ट ही डिफेक्ट ऑफ हिज ओन इज ओन गुड्स सो हुज ड्यूटी इट इज टू फाइंड द डिफेक्ट इट इज बायर्स रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी इट इज आर ड्यूटी टू डिस्कलोज द करेक्टर्स वेरी गुड विवेकेश रेणुका वेरी नाइस सो इट इज बायर्स ड्यूटी टू चेक बिफोर बाइंग द गुड सेलर विल नॉट डिस्कलोज यू द डिफेक्ट So, if examiner asks you what is the rule of cavity temper, you can write these two paragraphs that we have just discussed right now. So, पहले आप ये लिखोगे उसमें doctrine of cavity temper हमें क्या rule बताता है conditions लिखनी है जहाँ seller liable नहीं है duties of the buyer नहीं these are the cases where the buyer will be held responsible. Now let's read very interesting case laws Wards versus Hobbs. Uh, it is a case law in which pigs were involved. So you can see. The picture of cute, lovely pigs. Peppa pig. Dekhte ho, bachpan mein dekha hoga Peppa pig aapne. Aisa sahi face hota na. Mama pig, mama pig and Peppa pig ka hai na. Okay, jokes apart. So, this was the case of Watts versus Hobbs, 1878. It was covered under 1872 Indian Contract Act also. When you would have read about uh, fraud. So, you would have had mentioned about this case law. But same case law is there for the quality and fitness purposes also. So P bought the pigs by auction. So all these pigs were sold in an auction sale and very soon they fell sick. So one of the uh, pig was having a typhoid and all the germs got spread to other pigs also. So what has happened? Buyer said that, uh, give me, I want to claim the damages. You have not given me the goods as per the quality and fitness. 
but seller said look sir there was no implied condition of the quality and fitness for any particular purpose it was your duty to find out the health health of the pigs you are buying the goods aap check to karo ki mere goods theek hai ya nahi you just simply said that uh, i will buy these goods so all those who are writing about pepper pig that's great i'm glad you watch it and you enjoy it but now let's come here yes it is our duty to check before buying the goods very good those who are writing akansha anush pankaj very nice lisa renuka aditya so now the buyer has not checked the goods and he could see also that the face is looking so dull they're not well so don't buy such kind of goods now why are you buying them now he purchased and all the goods have died because of the sickness गुड्स मीन्स ये जो हमने पिक्स खरीदे इनको गुड्स बोल रहा है वो मूवेबल है ना तो दे आर कॉल्ड गुड्स ठीक है सो नाउ देर इज नो ब्रीच ऑफ एम्प्लाइड कंडीशन बायर शुड बी हेल्ड रिस्पॉन्सिबल ही कैन नॉट रिकवर द डैमेजेस दो आर आस्किंग मैम डू वी नीड टू लर्न द नेम ऑफ केस लॉ इट इज नॉट एट ऑल कंपल्सरी आई हैव टोल्ड यू हंड्रेड टाइम्स इट इज नॉट इम्पॉर्टेंट टू लर्न द केस लॉज इन सी ए फाउंडेशन द नेम्स ऑफ द केस लॉज इज नॉट इम्पॉर्टेंट सेक्शन आर नॉट इम्पॉर्टेंट बट इफ यू कैन लर्न देर इज नो हार्म बट नेवर एवर राइट अ रॉन्ग सेक्शन और अ रॉन्ग केस लॉ नो वॉट इज द एक्सेप्शन टू दिस रूल इफ आई वॉन्ट अ कलर जीरोक्स बट स्टेशनरी वेंडर हैज गिवन वॉट मैं योर क्वेश्चन इज इनकम्प्लीट Mr. Manthan, you can write your complete question. If you have asked for the Xerox copy and the stationery vendor has given you something else, then obviously, if you have let him know the purpose, you are relying on the seller's skill and judgment. Then there would be a breach of implied condition if such thing is not as to quality and fitness. If it is not as per your purpose. Okay. Now, what are the exceptions of the uh, exceptions of the rule of caveat emptor? Ab bache bada easy hai. Jo apne pura chapter padha hai na, sari breach of implied conditions. उन केसेस में तो सेलर की रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी है सिर्फ ब्रीच ऑफ इम्प्लाइड कंडीशन एस टू क्वालिटी एंड फिटनेस जहां पे वो कहते हैं थ्री कंडीशंस जहां पे आप रिलाई कर रहे हो सेलर सेल एंड जजमेंट पे जहां पे आपने उसको पर्पस बता दिया वहां पे इट इज द ड्यूटी ऑफ द बाय सो एग्जामिनर जनरली आस्क यू क्वेश्चन लाइक दिस एक्सप्लेन ही विल गिव यू सच अ बिग केस स्टडी वुड वर्थ एन एसोसिएट दिस इज अभी पढ़ेंगे हम एंड ही विल टेल यू एक्सप्लेन द ड्यूटी ऑफ बायर एंड एंड सेलर अकॉर्डिंग टू दी डॉक्टर ऑफ कैविट so such kind of questions can come in the exam where you will write that this is the duty of the buyer he should be aware and if it is not as per his choice and satisfaction he will be responsible but these are the cases where the seller will be held responsible so let us see the cases where the duty of the seller means these are the cases yahan pe likh lo exceptions means these are the cases where seller will be held responsible matlab caveat emptor ki exceptions hai they are exceptions to the rule of caveat emptor clear ho gaya bachcha तो नंबर वन फिटनेस एज टू क्वालिटी एंड यूजेज हम डिस्कस कर चुके हैं गुड सोल्ड बाय डिस्क्रिप्शन इफ दे आर नॉट एज पर डिस्क्रिप्शन रिटर्न देम गुड्स ऑफ मर्कन टेबल क्वालिटी इफ दे आर नॉट मर्कन टेबल यू हैव परचेज अ बेड शीट इट हैज एंड्स ऑन इट इट हैज टोन आउट इट इज ऑल स्क्रिबल्ड रिटर्न इट गुड सोल्ड बाय सैम्पल रिटर्न इट सैम्पल एंड डिस्क्रिप्शन इफ इट इज नॉट सेटिस्फाइड यू रिटर्न इट ट्रेड यूजेज आपका रेगुलर बिजनेस था इसी ट्रेड में डील करने का आपने नहीं दिया गुड्स उस ट्रेड के अकॉर्डिंग आपने डिक्लेरेशन देनी थी सी डिफेक्ट से फ्री है यू हैव नॉट गिवन इट बायर कैन रिटर्न द गुड्स सेलर एक्टिवली कंसील नाउ दिस इज हिडन डिफेक्ट लेटेंट डिफेक्ट सेलर ने कंसील करा डिफेक्ट को छुपाया फ्रॉड करा हमारे साथ ऐसा कोई भी अगर केस होता है देन बायर कैन रिजेक्ट द गुड्स so if seller tries to hide the defects he is uh, concealing the defects he is not letting you know ek hota hai ki batana to seller ki responsibility nahi hai defects batana to wahan pe patent defects aayega ye wala jo exception hai jahan pe seller ki duty hai ye latent defects hai you purchase a furniture uh, from the market and he has just pasted the leg it was all broken so here seller will be held responsible because he is trying to do a fraud and goods purchased under patent or brand name you purchased a bottle of coke from the market and it did not taste good whose fault it is buyer or seller 
can we apply caveat emptor in case of the rule where the goods are purchased under a patent or brand name children you have to tell Mr. Anuj Kumar, he went to the market. He purchased a bottle of Coke from Mr. Ranjit. Ranjit has supplied him a bottle of Coke, which comes under a brand name of Coke. And it did not taste good. Whose fault it is? Buyers or seller? Dildi batao mujhe. Yes, Anil Yadav, exceptions means responsibility of seller. That's good. Brands, very nice. No responsibility of seller. Coke company, Sanya Khan, very good. Ravina says buyer's fault. Why, bita? Company ki galti hogi, seller ki nahi, right nahi So, Dheeraj, good. So, all these cases where the brand name is involved, the particular brand will be held liable and not the buyer or seller. All right, so let's take a small break because we have done a huge revision of chapter two also. We will just wind up with one or more things of this chapter. Till meanwhile, just go through implied warranties. Just read from study material, Cavit Temper. I'm giving you 10, 5, 10 minutes break. Cavit Temper, read karo. Descriptive questions make very nazar marlo. We generally sare cover kar liye. And then ask your doubts. And then we will be starting with chapter number three after a small break.
all right welcome back students so almost all the queries we have resolved miss joa praveen has written a very interesting question let me just come to that she is asking ma'am what is the difference between example number 4 which is given related to tractor and example number 16 related to the laptop so when i taught you about breach of implied condition as to title i told you ownership is very important so in the same example where the tractor is being sold uh, ms joa and you are not the owner of that tractor then you are uh, the seller is not the true owner then the buyer has to suffer because the true owner can any time come and take the goods back but the remedy available to the buyer is he can go and take his money back from the seller so in the same example in the example number 4 of tractor only if i ask you that um, you were having the possession of that tractor you were owning it you were using it in your own fields do you think when the true owner came and he took the tractor back from you your possession also got disturbed yes or no everyone has to answer me did your possession means custody the usage of the goods that also got disturbed yes ma'am that also got disturbed because now i can no longer use that tractor so for that very breach of implied warranty where your possession has been disturbed you can claim the damages also either you can claim the damages on the basis of undisturbed possession or you have spent certain repair amounts on the tractor or on the laptop which you were using you have spent certain repair amount that also you can recover if the owner the true owner comes and takes back the goods from you very good all those who have written yes ma'am we can recover so both the cases are interrelated condition as to title again talks about the ownership where the ownership is taken back the goods are taken back from you by the true owner then buyer can recover the money but where the possession has been disturbed again the true owner comes and takes the goods it is not just the breach of implied condition it is also the case of breach of implied warranty मिस्टर कोमल रस्तोगी मैम मर्केंटेबिलिटी एक बार दोबारा बता दीजिए मर्केंटेबिलिटी का मतलब ये है बेटा कि आपने ये पेन मार्केट से खरीदा और जब आप घर आए तो इसकी निब टूटी हुई है आपने ऐसे से करके देखा तो इसकी निब नहीं निकलती चलता नहीं तो क्या ये मर्केंटेबल है क्या ये एक बिजनेस ऐसा मार्केट में सामान बेच सकता है जो की चलता ही ना हो आपने खोला और वो ऑन ही नहीं होता मर्केंटेबल कब होगा जब आपने ये पेन ऑन करा एंड इट स्टार्टेड वर्किंग non mercantable means you opened the pen there was no nib it's broken it's not working then it that means the goods are not mercantable working condition mein hone chahiye theek thaak hone chahiye goods usko bolte hain mercantility market mein bechne layak hone chahiye mercantable hone chahiye all right so wonderful those who have written ma'am no other doubts so we come to an end of chapter kv tempter also so this is your homework which you have to do May two thousand nineteen question paper. You should solve doing this question paper. We can quickly read out the question. Mrs. Wordworth and Associates, a firm dealing with the wholesale and retail buying and selling of certain category of goods, deal with rosewood, mango wood, teak wood, and Burma wood. So wooden logs बनाते हैं वो logs होते हैं ऐसे बड़े बड़े ना wooden logs तो different तरह के वो woods उन्होंने रखी हुई है rosewood, mango wood, teak wood, and Burma. Wood. a customer the mr das he was a customer and he said i want wooden logs jo aise se bade bade hote hai na lakdi ke logs hote hain to usne certain dimensions ki batayi ki mere carpenter ko ye wale wooden logs chahiye and ye wale jo wooden logs hai humne doors and windows banane hain apne ghar mein doors banane hain and window frames banane hain ye hame us purpose ke liye wood chahiye ab ho sakta hai us purpose ke liye teak wood zyada better hogi but usne mango wood de di which was unfit and carpenter rejected What will happen? How the shop owner refused to take the wood back because he has already cut them into pieces and he cannot resell. Six marks का इतना बड़ा क्वेश्चन आया है. तो शॉप ओनर क्या करता है? वो refuse कर देता है. मैं तो इसको वापस नहीं लूँगा. तो आप इसका exam उन्होंने बोला explain the duty of buyer and seller. So first paragraph में you will write the doctrine of cabinet tempter. The buyer should be aware before buying the goods. He should have checked. Mr. Das has informed him. He should check before buying the goods. If the three cases are there, he is relying on the seller's skill and judgment. He, the seller is dealing in such category of goods, and he has told the purpose. Then, if the condition has been breached, so it will be a breach of implied condition as to quality and fitness. Buyer will be held responsible. Oh, sorry, seller will be held responsible. 
एंड ड्यूटीज ऑफ बायर दैट यू शुड है गुड्स इस तरह से आप दोनों ड्यूटी ऑफ बायर एंड सेलर एक्सप्लेन करेंगे Mr. Das would be able to get the money right back, or what kind of word? This is your answer. Find it out and write it out, and tell me tomorrow. So do this question as test, okay? <coughs> All right. So let's move further. I think we have done these questions of testing your knowledge also. one last question we can do the doctrine of uh, so where you are thinking caps and answer me question number 9 the doctrine of caveat emptor does not apply when the goods are sold by sample when the goods are bought by sample and description when the exact purpose is known to the seller and he is a regular dealer all of the above tell me when does the rule of caveat emptor does not apply what will be the correct answer think carefully and answer me when the goods are sold by sample when they sold by sample and description when you have told the buyer seller and he is a regular dealer or all of the above when does it not apply धीरज एंड टूबा रॉन्ग आंसर अनुज कुमार रॉन्ग आंसर पंकज रॉन्ग आंसर जॉय बैनिक रॉन्ग आंसर दिव्या रॉन्ग आंसर एंड ऑल दी अदर्स सेड नाइन डी इज द करेक्ट आंसर मिस्टर मोतानी इफ द गुड्स आर नॉट एज पर सैंपल एंड डिस्क्रिप्शन डेफिनेटली द सेलर विल बी हेल्ड रिस्पॉन्सिबल नॉट द बायर so here the correct answer is all of the above why because when the goods are being sold by the sample they should comply with the sample otherwise seller is responsible when sample and description abhi humne dobara example kara basmati and ordinary rice ka if it is as per sample not as per description any of the things then again he can return the goods when exact purpose is told mr joy benick this is again case of breach of implied condition as to quality and fitness so in all these cases seller will be held responsible if there is anything which is not satisfied so 9d is the correct answer all right sabne theek answer de diya baki sabne very good and the last question from this chapter is in case the goods are sold by sample the goods shall correspond with the sample otherwise buyer can reject the goods buyer cannot reject the goods contract is terminated or seller is liable to punishment what will happen if the goods are sold as per sample and they should correspond otherwise means if they do not correspond then what will happen read it carefully and answer it back now when you send your answers 9 d use the correct answer now 10 a b c d choose this one is very simple Yes, Kaira, Juhi, Tuba, Kamal, Joy, Manik, Sanya, Nancy, Renuka, all of you are correct. Akash, Chuya, Pavan, Divya, Sakshi, Kinjal, Anjali, Kamal, very good, nice. Sana, Tambeshwari, Lakshmi, Shubham, बिल्कुल ठीक आंसर्स दिए हैं आपने. Buyer can reject the goods. Simple. Ten A is the correct answer. With this, we come to an end of this. chapter number 2 and now we are going to start with the third chapter today itself that is transfer of ownership and of ownership of ownership and delivery of goods chalo wapas aa jao beta is ne ab chapter mein sabne bilkul theek answers diye hain matani joya prince sanal yadav lakshmi all of good so i hope you have all understood and enjoyed learning about the implied conditions and warranties we have even answered we did descriptive questions also along with our studies so well done students now we are going to move little uh, technical chapter little twist and turns in unit 3 but again we will try to make this also very very simple for you so transferring of ownership means maine abhi aapko promise kara tha main ye bottle buyer ko bechungi aaj ab main is bottle ko bech dungi sale kar denge performance of contract kar denge 
फाइनल डिलीवरी ऑफ गुड्स दे दी जाएगी सो दिस सेशन हैज बीन डिवाइडेड इनटू फोर डिफरेंट टॉपिक्स सो दो कीप आस्किंग फॉर मोटिवेशनल स्पीचेस एंड मैम हमें थोड़ा मोटिवेट करें समझाएं लाइक आई ऑलवेज टेल यू ऑलवेज प्रिपेयर योर लेसन प्लान लाइक आई डू फॉर यू दैट इज टॉपिक वाइज ऑलवेज ब्रेक योर स्टडीज इन टू टॉपिक्स सो यू नो हाउ मच टॉपिक्स यू हैव कवर्ड when ever you sit for studying make a time table like wednesday tomorrow if you have uh, today when we have studied the class in 11 to 1 so always make a revision time table that whatever we have done in the class today 7 to 8 pm or 8 to 9 pm i will be definitely sitting and revising the same in the evening then after that on the weekend i am going to do these many topics and i am going to finish off my law as per all these weekends that i have written down the topics मेक अ टाइम टेबल टाइम टेबल के बिना कभी भी सीए की पढ़ाई नहीं होती है टाइम टेबल से आपकी रूटीन बनी रहती है रिमेम्बर चिल्ड्रन मेन वी यूज टू गो टू द स्कूल वी यूज टू हैव एट पीरियड्स है ना एंड वी यूज टू सो ईगरली वेट फॉर दैट रिसेस टाइम फोर पीरियड्स बिफोर रिसेस एंड फोर आफ्टर जनरली और मे बी सेवन पीरियड स्कूल माइट भी हैव बट देन ईच टीचर यूज टू कम एंड टीचर्स एवरी डे it was never that we are just studying maths or we just studying english it was always all the subjects why because in schools we always used to follow a time table so those disciplinary habits that you have built in childhood they generally go away because we stopped having schools we stopped having colleges when we are doing studies of ca we are doing it on your own so make a time table the way your principal the school teachers used to make it for you now you have to make it for your own self आप कभी भी टाइम टेबल के साथ पढ़ोगे हमेशा आपका शेड्यूल ठीक बना रहेगा यू विल नेवर एवर गो आउट ऑफ द शेड्यूल एंड ट्रस्ट मी ऑल दी स्मॉल हैबिट्स हेल्प यू लॉन्ग वे इन योर करियर आल्सो। फिर बाद में बच्चे बोलते हैं ना सीए वाली जॉब में भी बड़ा स्ट्रेस है प्रेशर है किसी भी जॉब में आप डॉक्टर बनते हैं सी बनते हैं हर प्रोफेशन में आपको स्ट्रेस लगता है कई बार बट जब आप रूटीन बनाते हैं टू डू लिस्ट बनाते हैं मैंने आज अपने दिन का ये काम करना है मैंने ऐसे रूटीन में चलना है मैंने टाइम टेबल बना लिया आपको हर काम आसान लग जाना चाहिए Keep ticking off the task that you have done. जो जो हमने कर लिया उसको क्रॉस लगाते जाओ एक मोटिवेशन मिलती है स्पिरिट आती है कि हाँ यार मेरा इतना सिलेबस कवर हो गया डन है आई हेव नाइसली कवर्ड इट सो टाइम टेबल इज मस्ट फॉर एवरी स्टूडेंट एटलीस्ट दोज हुआ स्टडिंग विद मी ओवर हेयर ऑनलाइन यू मस्ट मेक अ टाइम टेबल बच्चे इट रियली हेल्प यू अलॉट ओके सो वेन यू डिवाइड योर टास्क इन टू टॉपिक्स राधर देन आर्ली बेसिस ट्राई टू मेक इट अ टॉपिक वाइज टाइम टेबल सो दैट यू नो हाउ मच income tax oh sorry income tax carry how much economics you have covered how much accounts you have covered how much law you have covered and how much other subjects you have covered so your four subjects in foundation you should give equal importance and try to study each and every subject every day all right now coming back to the session layout for this chapter that is passing of property so i have divided into four sessions that is number 1 will be passing of property Number two is section twenty six. The risk prima facie passes with the property. Number three, transfer of title, and number four, the last topic of the session is performance of the contract of sale. So that is how four different topics this chapter has been divided into. Now, whenever we talk about passing of property, you just told me when we started the class, one is general property of the goods, another is. special property in the goods for sale of goods we always deal with the general property of the goods and what is this general property of the goods it means passing the ownership now this ownership gets passed passed either immediately or at a later date can you tell me what is the difference between passing the property immediately and passing the property at a later date we did this in chapter number 1 when the property is passed to the buyer immediately it is known as contract of dash when the property is passed at a later date to the buyer it is known as dash you have to tell me क्या बोलते हैं हम जब प्रॉपर्टी इमीजिएटली पास हो जाती है एंड अगर प्रॉपर्टी इन द गुड्स लेटर ऑन पास होती है
very good very good very good ma'am it is known as sale and agreement to sell excellent all those who have given the correct answers so passing of property section 18 to 26 is going to tell you how the sale happens and the property gets transferred how an agreement to sell the property gets transferred for different goods and then we will be covering risk and transfer of title other topics so let's begin with passing of property. So the first stage is we decide the legal rights and duties of the sellers and buyers. Who is having the risk over here? The seller is having all the risk because he is the owner. Then the delivery of goods will take place. After we have passed the property ownership, then delivery of goods. And then finally the risk passes with the property. What is the meaning of risk passes with the property? I am the owner of this pen. I am the seller. Tomorrow this pen gets broken. Who will bear the loss? Harleen ma'am is the seller. She will bear the loss. I sold this pen to Mr. Varun. Varun purchased this pen from me. He became the owner. Now if the pen gets broken, who will bear the loss? Varun will bear the loss. So risk passes with the ownership. Passing of property means passing of ownership. If the property has been passed to the buyer, Risk in the goods sold is of the buyer and not of the seller. Means if A has sold mobile phone to B. A sold mobile phone to B. B is the buyer. B went out of the shop and by mistake it got broken. The mobile phone got broken. Who will have to bear the loss of mobile phone? B or A? Jaldi bataunche. A is a seller, he, uh, he sold the mobile phone to B, the buyer, and after purchasing the mobile phone got broken. Who will bear the loss? Thank you, Mr. Kash Das. All those who are enjoying the lecture, thank you so much, students. Even I enjoy teaching all of you. We will have to bear the loss. Excellent. Those who have written the correct answer. Beautiful. Why? Because B becomes the owner. So, now my child comes to me that the owner will be the owner. The owner will be the owner. He will have to bear the risk. He will have to bear the risk. Now, this passing of property is again divided into different categories depending upon the subject matter of the goods. Now, what is the meaning of subject matter of the goods? One more test I am going to take of yours. What is the meaning of subject matter of the goods? Chaldi batao mujhe. Subject matter of goods kya hote hai? Opening up your study. What is the meaning of subject matter of the goods? Subject matter of contract of sale. So subject matter of contract of sale is the goods. Very good, Divya. And what are the goods? Existing goods, future goods, contingent goods. And further existing goods is divided into three categories. Specific or asserted goods. Yadena. And dusra hota hai, unasserted goods. And then it is future goods. Now, what we are going to do in this chapter is, first of all, it is very important you understand how this chapter has been framed for you. So, section 18 to 26, we will be talking at length. Very good, all those who have given the correct answer. Bikash, Pavan, Anj, Rani, Anand, Sahu, Anish Kumar, Joy, Banik, Muskan, Anil, Yadav, Lakshmi, Divya. Very good. All of you are correct. Section 8 and 9, Anj is saying. So, that was goods perishing before contract of sale. Here, I have asked you, what is the subject matter? Okay, Tambeshwari, that's nice. All the goods which you, Riti, is also far right, Ranya Khan. All the goods that we are going to purchase is known as movable goods. They are further divided into three different categories. So now what we're going to understand in this chapter, how property passes in case of specific goods a certain goods and unasserted goods. Wohi se dobara se hum revise karenge. Specific goods kaun se the? 
those which are specific and identified at the time of contract of sale. A certain means when you pick them up from the bulk and lot and you segregate them, they are known as a certain goods. And unascertain good means when you have to define them from the lot, that means they're lying in totality and then they are known as uncertain goods. So first of all, how does the property passes is? The property will pass after the identification of goods. So what you have to do is you have to identify. Number one rule is identifying the goods. Section 18 says when the contract is for uncertain, property will not pass unless and until the goods have been ascertained means unless and until the goods have been identified. Here ascertain ka meaning likhle na. Unless and until the goods are identified. Buyer can get the ownership rights only when the goods are specific and asserted. That means there are 100 uh, packets of salt. Came and said, ma'am, I want one packet of Tata salt. So unless and until I have not picked up the packet and I have given it to you, then only the property in the goods will pass. Till the time the packets of salt are lying on the shelf in my shop, it is my property. When I identify the goods, I picked it up, I packed it for you, then the identification has happened. And another is intention of the parties. Property will pass depending upon what you and me as buyer and seller have decided. So number one, as per the terms of contract, so whatever we have written, we will transfer the property as per that. Or by the conduct of the parties, when I picked up the goods, I gave it to you, property is set to pass. Or by the circumstances of the case. Circumstances of the case matlab hota hai ki you said that please make the delivery at my home. So I have to make the delivery at your home. Then only it will set to pass. Or you told that please make the delivery of goods in my retail shop. Or deliver the goods in my wholesale go down. In my go down. Then I have to sell the goods and give the transfer of delivery to your go down. So circumstances, whatever parties have decided how they conduct this frame. That is how the property passes. Number one, buy it. So what is the rule for transferring the property? A buyer and seller have to identify the goods and depends upon the intention of the parties. We have to decide what we have to decide. Now, what are the primary rules for passing the property? So I am dividing the goods into specific and certain goods. Uncertain goods. Goods on approval or return basis and reservation. Now, these are the four different sections that we're going to divide it. First is specific and certain goods and second is uncertain. Today, we first and second do cover. Specific and Number one, how the property passes in case of specific goods. Number two, how the property passes in case of uncertain goods. Number three, where the goods are sent on approval and return basis. Approval and return kya hota hai ki aapne mujhe kaha ki hume 10 din ke liye goods de do. Hum dekh ke decide karenge ki humne ye purchase karne hai ya na. So approval, if I either I approve it or I can return. And fourth is very very important and very interesting, reserving the right to disposal. Ye word na bachcho ko kai bari bada tang karte hai, reservation of right to disposal. Reservation means reserve kar lena. Aap restaurant jaate ho to aaj kal kai table book karana vartta hai na reserve karna vartta hai. So wo reservation ka matlab kya hota hai? Chalo mujhe jaldi batao. How many of you get your books, uh, table reserved or ticket reserved, reservation karate hai? Have you ever got your table reserved for dining, for dining out? Maybe you're going for a lunch or dinner or it's your birthday. So do you get your table reservation done? Yes or no? Koi batayega mujhe? या किसी ने सुना हो ये टर्म कैसे टेबल रिजर्व कराते हैं वाओ मोहन दीवानी इज आस्किंग मैम व्हाट आर अनसर्टेन गुड्स चैप्टर नंबर 1 गो टू द फर्स्ट प्रेजेंटेशन एंड रिवाइज इट फ्रॉम देयर बेटा रिति इज आस्किंग आइडेंटिफिकेशन ऑफ गुड्स कैसे होता है बेटा गुड्स आइडेंटिफाई करना आपने पैकेट उठाया और कस्टमर को दे दिया तो आइडेंटिफाई हो जाएगा Very good. Ranjit says, ma'am, booking before time. So we have booked the table before advance payment, train tickets, booking of that place. Very good, Ronika, Renuka, Ritik, Kamal, Anjali, Tuba, Vaseem, Kamal Rastogi, Sanya, Prince. 
Mohammed, Aditya. So that's nice. Reservation suna hua hai. Very good. TV mein suna hai. Okay, Ravina, that's nice. Fixing the thing. Okay, Anjali. Good. So, समझ आ गया ना रिजर्व फिर क्या होता है जब टेबल मेरे नाम पे रिजर्व है सपोज मिस टूबा वसीम के नाम पे टेबल रिजर्व सो मिस टूबा विल गो एंड शी विल से मैम मिस टूबा एंड द रिसेप्शनिस्ट विल से दैट दिस इज द साइट योर टेबल इज ऑलरेडी रिजर्व सो नाउ डू यू थिंक वेयर मिस टूबा हैज रिजर्व हर टेबल बिफोर गोइंग फॉर डिनर दैट मीन्स शी हैज रिजर्व दैट सीट शी विल ओनली गेट दैट सीट सीट होती है ना जैसे रिजर्वेशन में आप पढ़ते भी हो गवर्नमेंट एग्जाम में सीट्स रिजर्व होती हैं ये वो वाली नहीं है हम सिंपल रिजर्वेशन की बात समझ रहे हैं सो so, हाँ ट्रेन में सीट रिजर्व कर ली ओके अनुज कुमार सो so, अनुज ने कहा मुझे विंडो साइड सीट चाहिए टेबल और दैट सीट दैट ओनली यू विल सिट ऑन दैट सीट सो आई एम जस्ट ट्राइंग टू एक्सप्लेन यू कनेक्ट यू विदर्ड रिजर्वेशन सिमिलरली क्या होता है कई बार सेलर बायर को गुड्स देने से पहले एक रिजर्वेशन कर लेता है एक राइट right रिजर्व कर लेता है अभी आपने बोला रिजर्व मींस आपका राइट right हो जाएगा आपके पास वो राइट right है क्योंकि अगर आपने टेबल बुक करा है तो आपका राइट right है आप जाके वहां बैठोगे और आप टेबल पे खाना खाओगे बिकॉज आपका नाम लिखे आपने बोला ट्रेन में आपने विंडो साइड रिजर्व करी है तो दैट मीन्स यू हैव रिजर्व यू कैन हैव द राइट टू सेट ओवर दैट साइड वेरी गुड ऑल ऑफ यू आर क्लियर विद रिजर्वेशन रिजर्वेशन नाउ आई एम द सेलर आई रिजर्व माई राइट ऑफ डिस्पोजिंग द गुड्स डिस्पोज करने का मतलब क्या होता है गुड्स को कैसे यूज करना है क्या करना है इनका जो भी गुड्स का फैसला है वो मेरे पास है वो राइट right में कई बार रिजर्व कर लू अब वो मैं कब करूंगी सपोज मैंने आपको गुड्स भेजे हैं दिल्ली से चंडीगढ़ में गुड्स भेज रही हूँ बट आपने मेरी पेमेंट नहीं करी है तो मैंने कहा जब मेरे को पेमेंट आ जाएगी ना तब गुड्स आपके हो जाएंगे वेन आई विल रिसीव द पेमेंट देन ओनली यू बिकम दी ओनर so when i used such statement i have reserved the right on my goods generally what happens is the moment i have loaded the goods remember that railway receipt question i have loaded the goods in the railway i have given the railway receipt to the true owner true owner will go and show the railway receipt and will get the goods collected here i am not reserving the right to disposal because i have used the document of title to goods for transferring the goods owner will go and take the goods but where i have specifically put the conditions i can still do it bahut lambi story hai aaram se study material mein se padhenge samajh aayega but aaj ek reservation ka meaning samajh aa gaya so that aaj wala and next wala jo lecture hai wo bahut simple ban jayega kyunki aapko ye word bar bar bother nahi karega ki reservation hota kya okay let's move ahead so aaj hum specific and a certain goods ko pehle samajhte hain स्पेसिफिक गुड्स में प्रॉपर्टी का पास होती है व्हाट इज स्पेसिफिक एंड सर्टेन गुड्स गुड्स व्हिच आर आइडेंटिफाइड रिमेंबर दैट डेरी मिल्क एग्जांपल स्पेसिफिकली आई हैव आइडेंटिफाइड दैट आई वांट दैट पर्टिकुलर डेरी मिल्क पीनट बटर बटर फ्लेवर ओरियो चॉकलेट ऑल सो हियर द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट फॉर स्पेसिफिक गुड्स प्रॉपर्टी विल पास एट द टाइम्स द पार्टीज इंटेंड टू ट्रांसफर इट इंटेंड मतलब पार्टीज डिसाइड करेंगी जब पार्टीज ने डिसाइड करा अभी आज करना है तो आज हो जाएंगी Intent to transfer means parties have to decide when to transfer the ownership. I can either transfer it today or tomorrow or whenever I want. Or as per the conduct of the parties, whatever the parties have decided, circumstances of the case, at the time the property is to pass, unless a different intention appears, the rules contained twenty to twenty four will be applicable for passing. So subsection one and two, वो ही बात कह रहे हैं जो हम ऊपर अभी पढ़कर आए हैं. Intention of the parties, conduct of the parties, के ऊपर depend करता है कि how you want to transfer the property. That means how you want to transfer the ownership of such kind of goods. So again, it is further divided into three different stages. अब वो कह रहे हैं section twenty to twenty four decide करेंगे rules हैं हमारे three different rules में हमने define कर दिए specific goods को. Number one, when the goods are in deliverable state. Number two, when the goods are to be put in deliverable state. Number three, when you have to a certain means when you have to find the price of the goods. फिर से बड़ा simple हो गया मैंने. Specific goods को further three categories में divide divide करा है. Specific goods which are deliverable. मतलब already deliverable state में ये water bottles है. I I sell these water bottles. You came to my shop. It's lying on the shelf. You picked up one and you became the owner. 
you said i specifically want a blue bottle with white cap i gave you you are satisfied you become the owner the goods are in deliverable state the goods are yet to be put in deliverable state i told you that this uh, bottle has a ribbon over here attached to it and this is not having i am yet to attach this ribbon to this uh, this tag to this so i am yet to do something now when i will attach this ribbon to this bottle i will put it fix it i will weigh it measure it do all the kind of things that is required to complete the sale then the goods are ready to be delivered and i inform the buyer i will call the buyer look your goods are ready please come and take it that is the second category now third category you have to find the price you went to the sabzi mandi with your mother you went to the vegetable vendors and you said we want 5 kg tomatoes and 4 kg potatoes so he picked up 5 kg tomatoes and 4 kg uh, potatoes and he did the weighing and measuring on his machine and he tells you the price for the goods so something needs to be done to determine the price of the goods then the property cannot be passed until the price has been found so these are the three different categories where the goods specific goods uh the the property needs to be understood how the property will be passed let's read number section 20 when there is an unconditional contract unconditional contract means koi condition nahi lagayi hai maine koi ye nahi kaha ki aap mujhe payment karoge ya fir if it rains then only i will give you the goods ya fir you have to buy uh, 100 chocolates then i will sell aisi koi condition nahi main laga rahi hu and it is number one the sale for the specific goods number 1 point should be unconditional contract number 2 point it is specific goods which are in deliverable state here the property passes immediately the condition is that the goods should be ready for delivery the property passes to the buyer when the contract is made immaterial whether the payment has been made or not hame ye nahi dekhna ki aapne payment kari hai ya nahi kari hai jaise hi maine aapke sath contract kara aapki jo ownership hai wo buyer ko pass ho jayegi examples will make it more clear x goes into a shop and buys a television and tells the shopkeeper for its home delivery shopkeeper agrees to do it television becomes immediately the property of x who is the x x is the buyer so now let me see if you are awake or sleeping so children if this television got broken on the way or some problem happened who is the owner and who is going to bear the loss shopkeeper will bear the loss or the buyer sakshi a reservation of goods is it's very long topic we will discuss it when we go to that topic yes that's good all those who have written <clears throat> buyer will bear the loss very good very good rani vikash preeti monu baki so rahe sirf yahi bachche jaag rahe hain divya keh rahi ma'am main yahi question puchne wali thi तो बेटा आंसर तो कर दो एक्स इज दी ओनर बिकॉज ही हैज बॉट द गुड्स मोहक रंजीत रवीना गुड देवेंद्र रेणुका यस नाउ एवरीबडी इज अवे तनवी लीजा तेजवन मोहम्मद सबने आंसर दे दिए साना रति खालिद अहमद वेरी नाइस शॉपकीपर क्यों भाई शॉपकीपर क्यों शॉपकीपर ये द गुड्स दे दी स्पेसिफिक गुड्स थे हमने एक बार डिस्पैच कर दिया आप ओनर बन गए हो Whosoever is the owner is liable for the risk. So television immediately becomes the property of risk. Means X becomes the owner of the television. Now, if anything happened to the television, buyer will bear the loss. Okay, section twenty one, where the contract is for the specific goods and seller is bound to do something. मुझे कुछ ऐसा करना है अभी कि goods deliverable state में आ जाएं. Something is yet to be done. Then when the property will pass. when such thing has been done and the buyer has been given notice thereof means when the seller it means in section 21 property will pass to the buyer as a short notes bana liye to 
only when seller completes his pending task on the goods and inform the buyer give the notice to the buyer means inform the buyer usko bata deta hai ki aapke goods ready hain aake le jao and apna sara deliverable put uh, completes his pending task on the goods and put them into deliverable state deliverable means ki ab le jaya ja sakta hai unko leke ja sakte ho deliverable and inform the buyer then the goods are set to be ready to be delivered just read this example number peter buys a laptop i'm going to ask you the answers from this read this question peter buys a laptop from an electronic store ask for a home delivery example number 2 all of you have to read but the windows operating system was not installed shopkeeper promises to install it and call peter before making the delivery so here calling peter means once the uh, operating system has been installed and he has given the call to the peter property is set to transform intimated the buyer about it means he has informed the buyer once you have informed the buyer you have told him that now the operating system that you wanted me to install i have installed it please come and take the goods they are ready for delivery they are absolutely ready now the property in the goods will pass it is buyer's responsibility to come and take his goods now if peter does not come and the goods get stolen from the shop it is peter's fault because he has already informed peter that please come and take your goods they are ready for delivery so the ownership has been passed to peter immediately okay and the third category section 22 where the seller has to do something in order to a certain ka maine abhi meaning likhwaya tha a certain means to find the price to find the price he still needs to do something here the contract is for the specific goods but the seller is bound to weigh them measure them test them or do such other kind of things where he has to find the price of the goods here the property will pass only when such things are done and the buyer has been given the notice means buyer has been informed that now your goods are ready please come and take example number 3 a sold the carpets to the company which were required to be laid अब हिंदी में थोड़ा सा मीनिंग समझाते हैं उसका लेड का मतलब होता है कारपेट्स को बिछाना वो कहते हैं कॉन्ट्रैक्ट क्या हुआ था कि मैं आपको कारपेट्स बेचूंगा एंड वो कारपेट्स आपकी सारी कंपनी में हमने बिछा कर जाने लगा कर जाने ले डाउन कर दिया सारी आपकी कंपनी कारपेट्स वर डिलीवर टू द कंपनी प्रेमिस बट वो स्टोलन बिफोर दे कुड बी लेड सो this a guy came he went to the company he got all the carpets that he has designed for the company but before they could spread the carpets on the floor they got stolen were the carpets in deliverable state yes ma'am or no ma'am and who is liable to bear the loss wake up very nice pavan says ma'am never be sleep we always hear nicely your lectures and carefully great external accessories and if you are adding in the cars that is fine that is absolutely correct no kinjal we are not talking about future goods we are talking about specific goods please answer me that i have asked you very good buyer will be liable no seller is liable yes that's correct pratik divya preeti is correct others those who are writing buyer is not correct seller will have to bear the loss because the goods are still not in deliverable state why because there was a condition there was a condition that the carpets have to be laid they have to be spread now you have not fulfilled the entire condition and before that only the goods got stolen therefore the seller will be held responsible and uh, the property has not passed to the buyer company the seller himself a will have to bear the loss in this case very good all those who have answers carpets are not in deliverable state correct 
I hope these three points are absolutely absolutely clear. So, first point we have to understand passing of the goods in case of specific and a certain goods passing of property. The specific goods are divided into three different categories. Number one, the goods should be in deliverable state. If they're already in deliverable state, you picked up the chocolate from the shelf and gave it to the shop, uh, buyer, property passes immediately. Number two, if the goods are to be put in deliverable state, where you have to do something like operating system had to be installed in the laptop, there you install it and inform and call the buyer, then the property will pass. Or you have to find the price of the goods. So there were carpets which to were to be laid and they were weighed and measured and all the measuring needs to be done. Then the price was to be determined. Then the property will pass only after the price has been determined. Clear? Okay? Let's move to the last topic of today's unassertant goods. So first of all, tell me what unassertant goods are. What is the definition of unassertant goods? बहुत इजी है ये फ्रेंड्स इज आस्किंग इफ सेलर हैज गिवन रॉन्ग एड्रेस डोंट आस्क सच क्वेश्चंस इफ्स एंड बट्स बहुत कुछ हो सकता है सो देन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट विल बिकम वॉइड बोथ ऑफ द बायर एंड सेलर हैव टू बी रिस्पांसिबल फॉर सच काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स नो रॉन्ग एड्रेस टू बिगिन Large quantity goods are lying. Lot of goods. Very good. Very good. Very good. Those who have written the definition of an a certain goods and not specific. Anand Sahu says, okay, goods lying in bulk. That is correct. So all those who have written, which we cannot separate. Anil Yadav, मतलब which we cannot separate का क्या मतलब होता है? To separate which which are yet to be separated. ये होना चाहिए. Which are yet to be separated from the lot. Which are in huge bulk. Very good. Excellent. Very, very good answers you have given. So, uncertain goods means which are lying in huge quantity and bulk. How will their property pass? Two steps. Specific goods में three stages हमने करी थी. Uncertain goods में two steps. Number one, where the sale is by description and appropriation. Number two, delivery of the goods to the carrier. Section twenty three has two subsections. Subsection one and subsection two. So these are the rules. Examiner can straight away ask you, what are the rules for passing the property of unassertant goods? ये सारे आपने rules लिख कर आए। आया हुआ है exam में straight to proper question आया हुआ है कि what are the rules for passing the property of unassertant goods? So number one, unassertant goods should be sold by description. बताना पड़ेगा ना तभी पता लगेगा unassertant है बहुत सारे हैं। तो आपने बोला मुझे five packets of salt chain। आपने जब बताया describe करा फिर उसे अप्रोप्रिएट करा जाएगा वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ अप्रोप्रिएशन अप्रोप्रिएशन ओवर हियर मीन्स सिलेक्शन अप्रोप्रिएशन ऑफ गुड्स ओवर हियर मीन्स सिलेक्शन ऑफ गुड्स सो अप्रोप्रिएशन मीन्स सिलेक्शन ऑफ गुड्स विद द इंटेंशन ऑफ यूजिंग देम इन परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट विद द म्यूचुअल कंसेंट ऑफ बायर एंड सेलर नाउ दिस म्यूचुअल कंसेंट ऑफ बायर एंड सेलर इज वेरी वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग You went to the shopkeeper, Mr. A, the car dealer, and you said you want to buy a white Centro car. He said these are the three different Centro cars that I have. They are red in color. There was one with which was white in color also, but I don't want to sell this. Can this sale take place where the seller is not willing to sell his white Centro car, and you filed a case that I want to purchase it? Is it a case of contract of sale? No, ma'am, because the basic condition of contract, the mutual consent means dono ka yes hona chahiye us cheez ko sell karne mein. Free consent hona chahiye, mutual consent hona chahiye, consensus ad adem hona chahiye, agreeing to the same thing at the same time should be there. If that is only not there, there is no sale. Go back to the basics of Indian contract act. Remember essential elements. So, on a certain goods have to be means. Can be sold by selection of the goods with the intention of using them, and there should be a mutual consent of buyer and seller. Clear, okay? So, what are these essential elements? Number one, there should be a contract for the sale of unassertion or future goods. या तो अभी हमने identify नहीं करे हैं या फिर वो future goods. Goods should be as per the description and quality. Very important. 
if i have described that i want 500 bags of sugar they should be as per the 500 bags of sugar which has been defined and the quality if i have asked for first quality sugar it should be first quality sugar the goods shall match with the description and quality goods must be in deliverable state so the buyer uh, seller has put the goods ready packed them and uh, have put notes on them have uploaded in the truck and then he calls them the goods are in deliverable state goods must be unconditionally difference from the intention to appropriate ah uh, ye line rehne do isko mat read karo don't read this line पहले इसको समझो द गुड्स मस्ट बी अनकंडीशनली अप्रोप्रिएटेड इधर बाय डिलीवरी टू द बायर और हिज एजेंट और दी कैर अनकंडीशनली का मतलब क्या होता है आप बताओ मुझे मैं बता चुकी हूँ आपको ये टॉपिक शुरू करने पे थैंक यू सो मच दो आर एंजॉइंग द सेशन थैंक यू सान्या एग्जाम्पल दे दो रिति कुमारी बेटा किसका एग्जाम्पल अभी मैं आपको फाइव मिनट्स दूंगी डाउट्स के लिए अनकंडीशनल मीन्स मैम वेन देर इज नो कंडीशन हमने कोई ऐसा नहीं बोला कि आप पेमेंट करेंगे तभी आपको गुड्स मिलेंगे बारिश होगी तभी आपको गुड्स देंगे अगर आप इतने गुड्स लेंगे अगर मगर हमने कोई कंडीशन नहीं लगाई एंड हमने गुड्स या तो डिलीवर कर दिए हैं पायर को या फिर उसके एजेंट को या कैरियर को एजेंट और कैरियर मीन्स I had to send the goods from Delhi to Pune, and I have. I am a seller. I have loaded the goods in the truck, which is going to take the goods to Pune. That means I have unconditionally appropriated. I have unconditionally selected the goods by delivery, either to the buyer or to his carrier. Here, this buyer will be treated. This uh, driver who is taking the trolley will be treated as buyer's agent. once i have delivered the goods to the carrier carrier is the person who is going to take these goods to the buyer it will be assumed that the goods have been given to the buyer when the seller deliver the goods to the buyer or a carrier for the purpose of transmitting the goods transmission means buyer ko dene ke liye and he does not reserve the right to disposal that means he has unconditionally appropriated the goods let's read example number 4 bill of lading banaya maine of railway parcel and i have given it in the name of the buyer and i sent the goods to him children you tell me ownership has been passed once i have made a bill of lading yes ma'am now if on the way the goods are lost by theft or accidental loss who will be responsible buyer or the seller and why जल्दी बता दो मुझे इसमें एंड देन वील स्टॉप बिकॉज आई वॉन्ट टू टेक अपट्स ऑल्सो हु विल बी रिस्पॉन्सिबल इफ आई गिवन द गुड्स टू द कैरियर फॉर ट्रांसपोर्टिंग अनकंडीशनली एप्रोप्रिएटेड द गुड्स एंड द गुड्स कॉट डिस्ट्रॉयड ऑन द वे हु विल बी रिस्पॉन्सिबल बायर और सेल very those who have written ma'am buyer will be responsible because the goods have already been given to the buyer's agent it will be assumed that the person who is bringing the goods is acting as the buyer's agent unconditionally appropriation means we have not reserved the right to disposal we have already given the goods to the buyer buyer will be responsible very good tuba kamal rani joy ramina anuj divya preeti muskan dheeraj dilip kamal sanya lakshmi b vardhan all of so good b vardhan don't worry we will make the subject more easy and you will learn it don't worry if, if you're finding the attempt will be tough don't worry at all think positive so now we have 2 3 minutes please ask your doubts whatever you want to ask buyer is the correct answer neha ansh tambeshwari priyanka hini kumari bilkul theek answers hai your homework is on thursday we are meeting we will be continuing with chapter number 3 chapter number 1 you should revise chapter number 2 wholly you going to revise although we have revised it very nicely in the class also today and read these first two pages of study material of chapter 3
two to three pages. Three pages we have done. Three pages. Thank you, Muskan Pandey says every concept is clear, no doubts. So great. Anybody else, if you want to ask any doubts, please feel free to ask your doubts now. I hope you enjoyed the session and you will revise your task also. Good. Yes, Varun, Bapri, we will definitely. Don't worry. Thank you, Divya. I'm glad you got something good. Uh, Riti Bharti, where you're selling the goods in that television example, where the television is readily available, it is in deliverable state, you will, the shopkeeper will give it to his person who will take in the cart and deliver the goods to the buyer. So in such a case where the goods are in deliverable state, specific good hai, aapne usko tra transport karne ke liye de diya hai, to buyer immediately owner ban jaba. Thank you, Bikash. Thank you, Pavan. How buyer is liable? Very nice question, Mr. Tejban. So when we do section 25, 23, 25, 26, all these sections continuously we have done, the things will become more clear to you. As of now, jitna humne padha hai, jab wo owner ban gaya, whosoever is the owner is liable. Jaisi mene buyer ko owner bana diya, goods mene carrier ko diya, aur bola buyer ka agent act kar hai, buyer owner hai, to wo liable. Okay? All right. Thank you, students. I think time is also up. Thank you, Ronika. Renuka. Thank you, Muskan Pandey. Thank you, Anuj. Yes. All right, students. Yes, sir. It is already done. The students don't have any doubts. So it is over. Thank you.